Hello viewers, I welcome you all to this lecture on crystals and their structure. In everyday life, we see many types of crystals. The surface of crystals remain a source of fascination and delight. Some of these crystals present perfect arrangement of atoms, ions or molecules in crystals. It is remarkable that simple visualization of the surface of crystal has led to a new branch of physics called crystallography. During 19th century itself, even before the atomic, the atomic theory of materials had been universally accepted. Study of crystals and its structure is very important for chemists, physicists and geologists to study the properties of the crystals. In today's lecture, we will see how the simple surface of crystals bring out the underlying story of arrangement of atoms or ions or molecules in the crystal. The objective of today's lecture is to facilitate the learners to learn about crystalline materials and their basics. The outcomes would be that learners will be able to state types of solids, outline the basics of crystals, discuss the Bravis space lattices and in the next lecture, Miller indices with examples. Matter. All of us know matter is of four forms, solids, liquids, gases and the fourth state is plasma state. Today we will discuss about the types of solids. It is of two kinds. One is crystalline solids and amorphous solids. What are called crystalline solids? A crystal is a substance in which atoms or molecules are arranged at a definite point in space, at a definite distance from each other and in a definite angular orientation to other atoms or molecules surrounding it. This repeating pattern in three dimension forms a crystal. Crystal structure is the periodic array of atoms, ions or molecules repeated at regular intervals in all directions in a crystal. Look at this type of crystal. We could see same kind of atoms located at definite points, at definite distance, in definite orientation in three dimension. This picture shows layers of different kinds of atoms arranged in a regular way. Here, this picture shows a two-dimensional lattice, which is having same type of atoms arranged in a regular fashion. This is also another kind, and you can see some layers, displacement in between, but arranged in a regular fashion. The other kind of solid is known as amorphous solids, or isotropic solid. It is composed of randomly oriented atoms, ions or molecules that do not form definite patterns or lattice structures. You can differentiate the pictures in the previous slide from this picture. There also you represented one kind of atoms with the blue color and another kind with red color. Here also same type of atoms but you cannot find the regularity. Some disorderliness could be seen. The distance between the atoms is not the same. The orientation of atoms is also not the same. So this type of solids in which arrangement of atom is arranged in a disorderly way are called amorphous solids. Let us now understand the distinction between crystalline and amorphous solids. So the left side tells the crystalline solids, right side tells you some features about amorphous solids. Crystalline solids will have definite geometrical shape throughout the crystal, whereas amorphous solids do not have definite geometrical shape throughout the crystal. These crystalline solids are anisotropic because they have different physical properties like thermoconductivity, electrical conductivity, 
refractive index, etc., in different directions. Whereas amorphous solids are called isotropic because they have the same properties in all directions. Crystalline solids are most stable solids, whereas amorphous solids are less stable. Crystalline solids have sharp melting point, whereas amorphous solids do not have sharp melting point. The cooling curve of crystalline solids have breaks and the middle portion of which corresponds to the process of crystallization. The cooling curve is very smooth in the case of amorphous solids. These are the differences between crystalline and amorphous solids. Next, let us discuss about some important technical terms associated with crystal structure. The first term which we very often refer will be lattice. The other name for lattice is space lattice because crystal is occupying three-dimensional space. Next term mostly used is unit cell. Next basis and some lattice parameters and lattice constant, atomic packing factor. But in today's lecture, we will be discussing about what is called lattice, unit cell and basis and how they form the crystal. Lattice or space lattice. Space lattice is an infinite array of points in three-dimensional space in which every point has an identical environment like any other point in the crystal is called space lattice. This picture shows one-dimensional lattice. You can see an arrangement of atoms the distance between the atoms remain the same. So one dimensional lattice can go up to infinity in this direction or up to infinity in the other direction. The next is two dimensional lattice. Here arrangement of atom is in only one direction, for example, x-axis. Whereas in two dimensional lattice, you can see arrangement of atoms in x and y-axis. If you extend this arrangement, up to infinity in this direction or up to infinity in this direction or in this direction or in the left direction. Let us now see three dimensional lattice. You can see the space in between. You can see the other side. Three dimensional means the single dimensional arrangement of atom is extended along x, y and even in the z direction. Now, let us see what is called basis. So, lattices, arrangement of points. Now, what is basis? An atom or group of atoms associated with each lattice point is called as basis. So, if each point is occupied by a single atom or groups of atoms, that atom or the cluster of atom is called basis. We can represent it like this. If you consider the crystal structure like this, so here some arrangement of combination of atoms in a regular fashion. This crystal structure you can just imagine to be like this. These are the lattice point, first point, second point, third point, like that you have nine points arranged. At each point, if you keep a single atom or a cluster of atoms, this cluster of atoms is known as basis. So if these atoms are arranged at every lattice point in a regular pattern, then forms the crystal structure. Next, we will discuss about unit cell. What is unit cell? It is the smallest volume of the solid with which the entire crystal is constructed by translational repetition in three dimensions. It is the fundamental elementary pattern of the crystal. Now you can see these points are called lattice points. It has formed a cube. This is called the unit cell. Now you can see a bigger cube 
the other parts are lightly shaded now this unit cell if we extend this way if we extend backward you can see in all the three dimension if we extend you can construct a cubical structure so the smallest volume of this solid with which the entire crystal can be built is called unit cell if the lattice points are only at the corners the unit cell is called primitive cell you can see the lattice points only at the corners then this unit cell is called primitive cell so this unit cell is a small part of a simple cubic structure now consider this structure you can see lattice points at the corners of the face of this three dimensional picture also you can find some lattice points at the center of this face at the center of this face at the center of this face and the back and the front face and the down face so if you find lattice points at every corner of every face as well as some more lattice points then such type of unit cell is called non primitive cell so this non primitive cell is an example of face centered simple cubic structure let us now see what are called lattice parameters you can see in the picture some parameters like a b c and the interfacing angle the angle between x y axis y z axis z x axis these are called interfacing angle and this plane you have taken into consideration this plane is intersecting the axis at different points so a b c are the primitives of the unit cell or the intercepts of the unit cell and alpha beta and gamma are the interfacial angles so lattice parameters are the primitives the other name for this is axial lengths this length this length are intercepts along the three axes and the interfacial angles alpha beta gamma are called lattice parameters of the unit cell so lattice parameters of the primitives and the interfacial angles the primitives are nothing but the intercepts made by the given plane on three axes and the interfacial angle together called lattice parameters lattice parameters decide the actual size and shape of the unit cell next we come to an important part of crystals bravais lattice in 1850 m a bravais showed that identical points can be arranged spatially to produce 14 types of regular pattern these 14 space lattices are known as bravais lattices whichever crystal you can take the atoms or the molecules can be arranged in such a way that you can form them into only 14 types let us now see the 14 types of space lattices 14 types of space lattices in the seven system of crystal which are called bravais lattices seven types of systems have 14 types of space lattices let us see what are they you have seven systems of crystal you have cubical crystal tetragonal orthorhombic crystal monoclinic crystal triclinic crystal rhombohedral or trigonal crystal and hexagonal crystal so all kinds of crystals in the universe if you take you can segregate them into only seven kinds of crystals now in each kind of crystal how many types of space lattices you can find let us see the cubic crystal can have three types of space lattices tetragonal can have two types orthorhombic can have four monoclinic can have two triclinic can have one rhombohedral or trigonal crystal system can have 
single type of space lattice only and hexagonal also only single type. If you add all these together, you can have 14 types of space lattices in seven systems of crystal. Let us now see one by one. First one, cubic crystals. There are three types of space lattices. Three lengths of the unit cell are same and they are at right angles form the cubic crystal. So this is the cube, three dimensional figure. If you take the length, the breadth and the thickness along the three axes, if A, B, C are equal to each other and the interfacial angles alpha equal to beta equal to gamma, then that structure forms simple cubic crystal. Some examples are given here. The simple most example is sodium chloride crystal, which is the table salt. This is simple cubic. You have lattice points at the corner of the cubic crystal. This is one unit cell. This pattern is repeated along the three dimensions. The entire crystal could be constructed. So this type of unit cell is called simple cubic. Some eight atoms at the corner of the simple cubic forms a simple cubic crystal. The next one you can see face centered cubic. This unit cell is called face centered cubic. You can see like simple cubic, you have lattice points at the corner of this cube. In addition, for each face, you know, for a cube, there are six faces. One this side, one other side. So two, this side one and this side two and up and down. So each face will be having additional lattice point at the center of the face. So the upper face and the down face. This left side and the right side and the front side and the back side. So this is called face centered cubic. There is one more type cubic structure could be, you can see eight lattice point at the corners and you have one more lattice point at inside of the cube. This is called body centered cubic. Second category of the system of crystal is tetragonal crystal. It has two types. So you can see here, it is a kind of parallel of height. So here, the conditions, two lengths of the unit cell are equal. Third one is longer and all are at right angle to each other. You can see this A and B are equal in length, but C is longer, but alpha, beta, gamma are at 90 degree. So A equal to B, but not equal to C. So this is one kind of tetragonal crystal. Examples are given here. Titanium oxide crystal is one such example. Next one, orthorhombic crystal. Lengths of the unit cells are different, but they are all at right angles. A will be different, B will be different, C will be different, but the angles will be 90 degree. This is orthorhombic crystal. Some examples are given. Next type of crystal is monoclinic crystals. Lengths of the unit cell are different. Two axes are at right angles and the third one is oblique inclined. A is different from B and C, but the interfacial angles alpha and beta will be 90 degree, but the gamma will be oblique. So here some examples are given. You can go through. Next type is triclinic crystal. So here the interfacial angles are not equal to 90 degree. Lengths of the unit cell are different and they are obliquely inclined to each other. A is not equal to B is not equal to C and alpha, beta, gamma also not equal to 90 degree. That type of crystal is called triclinic crystal. Next one is rhombohedral. The other name for this is trigonal. Here, lengths of the unit cell are equal and axes are inclined to each other at an angle other than 90 degree. Such type of crystal is called rhombohedral crystal. So A equal to B equal to C, but alpha, 
and beta gamma will not be equal to 90 degree. So here the crystal, calcite crystal, bismuth, etc. are examples for thrombohedral crystal. The seventh type crystal is hexagonal crystal. Two axes of the unit cell are equal in length in one plane at 120 degree with each other and the third axis is perpendicular to this plane. This is called hexagonal crystal. Suppose if you take the x, y axis along this direction, you find that A is equal to B but not equal to C and alpha and beta will be 90 degree and gamma will be 120 degree. This is what called hexagonal crystal. Examples for this is quartz, zinc, and cadmium, etc. This bravus lattices are explained on the basis of lattice parameters only. In all the seven systems, we used the primitives ABC and the interfacial angles. So we conclude this talk on crystals and its structure. Thank you, one and all. I hope you enjoyed this talk on crystals.